Hi. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how what you're learning in golf may be really doing harm to your body and not making your golf swing better. There's a lot of people that are trying to play the game to the highest of levels and they're usually the ones who are suffering the most injuries. There's a lot of knee injuries going on on tour. There's a lot of knee injuries going on amongst good amateur golfers and people who practice a lot because they're attempting to lock their legs and when you do that and turn your body like this you're putting a tremendous amount of twisting motion on your knee. Your knee is a simple hinge. It moves back and forth just like your finger does but it doesn't go around and it doesn't go sideways. If every day say you hit, let's say you hit 150 balls a week. If 150 times a week you try to twist your finger and move it back and forth won't be too long before you got an arthritic finger and pretty soon it's calcified and it'll be a worthless joint. You destroy it. You need a finger replacement if they had one, but they do have knee replacements and lots of golfers are getting them. It's the same on both sides. If you lock your bottom and try to turn your top, all of this torque you're trying to put goes right on that knee and when you go through the other way, if this heel is staying down and you're turning, once your hips get to here somewhere, that leg locks and you're stuck. So destroying both knees that way. At the same time destroying the knees, the human spine is being destroyed as well. Your spine is a series of vertebrae that operate much like links in a chain. Where a link in a chain would fit into the other link, it would move a certain amount but not very far and be stopped when it reached the end of its movement. The human vertebrae doesn't work like that. They, they kind of line up this way, but they got little shoulders on them so that when they hit, they stop at a certain point. Now, the top vertebrae from where the rib cage is attached, there's very little movement in them because the ribs come out of the back and attach to a solid bone in the front, the breastplate, except for the floating ribs. So from where the floating ribs start down to the bottom, to the top where it enters your pelvis, there is a bit more movement. So if you only got a few links in there and you're trying to get 90 degrees of turn, each one of those links has one or two degrees. So if you're trying to hold your hips, and you're forcing a chest turn and turning and turning and turning and turning. What happens is once the slack gets out, then what you're starting to do is compress those discs. And those discs have, they have a cushioning piece in between. And you keep compressing and compressing on that disc. And before you know it, you got a bad back. And if you keep doing it, then you really compress the disc. And you could, you could displace this. You can do all kinds of harm to your spine doing that. So that's really not the way you want to go about doing it. What you do want to do is as you make your turn, you want to allow your legs to move so that the whole spine moves as if you were a one-piece package. You turn your whole spine. Now you're using levers to move it rather than trying to untorque it like a big rubber band, which it isn't. You turn. Your levers have now enabled it to move. Now you can complete your turn by moving your shoulder blades, which slide on your body. You have now taken all the slack out without harming it. So now if you use your levers to move you the other way, you have a tightly connected package that brings your arms around powerfully as if you're throwing something heavy and you have a much better golf swing and you'll protect your knees and your spine for a very long time so you can play late in your life.